Greetings, everybody. Our guest is the one and only Mark Sargent. Mark is arguably the most prominent, recognizable, and influential individuals of the Flat Earth Movement over the last several years. You can find the links to all of his information in the description and the show notes, as well as his content on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Mark K. Sargent, that's S-A-R-G-E-N-T. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks very much for having me. Hey, first question uh, right out of the gate, Mark. Yeah. Um, is it true that you believe in contradiction to what all God-fearing men should, that the Earth is not an oblate pear-shaped spheroid? Is that true? <laughs> that is true. <laughs> we are living in a snow globe. How's that? A snow globe. Yeah. Okay. All right. Second follow-up, and I know this is something that's been on our minds, and I'm not sure exactly which dark corner of the Internet this crawled out of, but I just mm -hmm. want to put this to bed yeah. uh, you know, before, before it gets fit. Is it also true that you believe that Dolly Parton is flat and the entirety of NASA's vast catalog of Dolly Parton images are, in fact, digitally manipulated artistic creations? Is that, is that also true? I think I know where you're going with this, and <laughs> yes. Really? Because I have no idea. That I that I have no clue where I was going. Um, I, I'm just assuming that you put in Dolly Parton in in place of NASA and all the aspects of NASA, and so, but 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 are are Dolly Parton's is that what you're saying? Yeah. Are, are okay. Dolly Parton's breasts fake? Yes. Is are the NASA pictures fake? Yes. How's that? Yes. Okay. There you go. Three more. Yeah. yeah. I was I was curious because I know, and I don't remember when this was exactly. Yeah. But uh, do you remember when the uh, the interview where, where Neil deGrasse Tyson said that was that was that after uh, you had put out the flat Earth clues video? Oh, when he was talking about the the Red Bull jump, not the Red Bull jump, but the the video where he discusses the shape of the Earth and he says, you know, it's not actually. Oh, right. The yeah, the oh, oh, oblate uh, spheroid, the pear shaped pear shaped thing. oblate. Spheroid. I think so. I but it, I'm gonna have to have somebody look it up for me because uh, it was a convention that he was at. He was at a oh, some sort of symposium at a university. I think it was after 2015, though. I do. Oh, yeah, the, the 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 video that I saw said that it was it was uploaded in 2016, but that was one of you know how it goes. That could be. Yeah, you know, I, it it wouldn't matter if he it, if he did or not because even if no matter when he hadn't the the flat Earth concept really hadn't been thrown at him yet. From, okay. from, a, from a social media standpoint but okay. either way he, he said it that that thing he's honestly he's helped us more than hurt us with... i was gonna say because yeah because my my thought on it was if i were in your position yeah back in that time yeah i just would have thought my goodness uh that seems like kind of like a slam dunk i thought i mean i Anybody saying something that absurd? Well, after, but then he after, after purporting all those images after after all the images come out for so many years. Yeah, uh, he tried to backtrack on on a couple different radio shows and said, he, you know, he was trying to clarify to say, well, when right. I say oblate, that means you know that if I had a, if it was a billiard ball, you'd barely even be able to feel the 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 surface. You know, the, the it would still feel to you in your hand like a complete sphere. And and it was that was complete departure. It's like no oblate means oblate. Right. <laughs> you know, you right. look it up the dictionary, and it, not only that, he said oblate and pear shaped. So he yeah he was trying to to back. But then but then he came out a little bit later and went after the Red Bull jump and said it was scientifically dishonest. And you so, say something about too right, uh, uh, Loke, that you about the because I because well, I, yeah, I, I barely said that, that he said there's no way you'd be able to see the curve from there, which is no. which is I think. Correct. Like if you look at a math work globe, yeah. the distance, even a hundred miles, is barely anything. Yeah. So you have to go way, way up there to see a curve. Yeah. Uh, not that there is one, but if there was. Yeah. Yeah. But he, I mean, he went so far as to say that no civilian will ever see the curvature. Is and, that what he said? Yeah. I mean, because they're just not. I mean, you know, plane uh, commercial airlines cap out at about ten miles. Spy planes, give or take, if you believe them, at twenty miles. And and so on, but and we sent only really military people to the ISS again, if you believe in that. So right. yeah, Neil, when he said he he has helped us seriously. He, the, the the he's he hasn't been as bad necessarily in quotes as like Elon Musk, but he's still bad. You know, he he throws stuff out there that we just use against him. Now, obviously, Elon is more in the headlines, uh, well, oh. more, more than usual. Oh. Uh, 
recently. Well, uh, I mean, the the media is trying to turn him basically into Tony Stark. That's you know, that's that's what right. they're doing. I mean, it's like they're they're trying to pump him up into that level, and and they're in fact to where now it's it's mostly myth. It's like, oh no, he he founded PayPal. No, he didn't. You know, oh, he founded Tesla. No, he didn't. You know, he right. started SpaceX, yeah, with the help of the government, yeah, and then a solar panel company also with the help of the government and, right. and stuff like that. But no, no. I mean, again, most Americans don't even realize he's not even from here. He's South right. African. Well, and, and one of the things that I, that has been at least somewhat perplexing, I think, when we've, when we've discussed it is, is the fact that uh, so many in the, well, a, a larger amount than I would have initially thought. Yeah. And what I would refer to as kind of the people who are looking at the truth movement or whatever, you, however you want to call it, yeah, um, seem to kind of be on that Elon train, as it were. Uh, I hate to. Kind of like, I, oh I, man, this is he's you know he's I, he's doing the free speech thing. I'm like, well, nah, no, well, no, that that deal's on hold as of now. And well, I, knew, I, know it's I knew, on hold. yeah, right, correct. I it's, knew it would be taping for sure. sure, but but still, it's just the whole, it just kind of though, can I really because of that one main issue. Uh, really buying into this idea that yeah. this is he is you know he's it this is the one oh, yeah. this is the one yeah, yeah. they they're almost equating him and I'm not trying to be blasphemous here when I say this but they're they're equating him to the whole uh, level of Trump Jesus which is you know e Elon Christ the with, e right, Emperor King I mean yeah. he is he is just I mean every I mean I wrote about him back in 2017 where I was saying this guy is a complete fraud. <laughs> He's never right. ever done anything he ever set out to do ever. And and then at one point he jumps ahead of everybody. I mean one one week I just wake up and it's like, oh yeah, by the way, Elon Musk is the richest man in the world. I'm going, yeah. whoa, since since that was quite the leapfrog. Yeah, since since when? I go I, I go I understood when when Amazon jumped in front of Microsoft. That I completely understood. The Amazon Prime model is yep. all all consuming. But yep. To tell me that Tesla Motors is now the most uh, financially stable car company in the world and right. and made him the richest man in the world at the same time is going, the, the media is, they're just, they're just conjuring stuff out of thin air. And I've got friends and family that are going along with it. I mean, I've got, you know, got brother-in-law. I says, oh yeah, yeah. Elon Musk is a complete genius. He might be able to lead us out of this. I'm going, what are you smoking? Yeah. It says, no, oh God, I hate that guy. Well, it's just it, it He's also gonna lead us somewhere. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there's some leading. I think the thing is, it doesn't. I mean, it does to me. It is a great example of uh, the way the human mind works and right. the idea of wanting to be led and wanting to have a, some sort of a savior. People figure. do. People want to follow uh, as much as you know. People in our community, we 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 point and laugh at people and say, "Oh, they're sheep." There's a lot of sheep out there. Most of them. Of sheep. Most of yeah. them, uh, the people out there are sheep. And and as much as I would like to turn them all around, there's an old saying, which is conformity builds empires. And we wouldn't even be talking right now if there weren't that many sheep. It's right. just frustrating recently because it's so blatant. Beforehand, at least it had some subtle aspects to it. Now, they're just throwing out headlines there. These massive distractions and the narrative is so simple, yeah. uh, you know. Stupid, basically stupid stories for for stupid people. How's that? <laughs> yeah, very true. I had, a, I had a friend in high school whose dad was a chemist, and uh, we'd get so frustrated when we'd go to, uh, you know, Sonic, and they'd mess up our order or something. Yeah. And, and after a certain amount of time, he said, look, guys, everybody can't be smart. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, But it's true. It's true. You go. The, for for our particular civilization, I mean, there's a reason why it's called the pyramid model. You know, it's right. The, the, there's a huge chunk in those lower bands that are they will do whatever is told. What what bothers me is that they will believe, and that's straight out of Orwell, which is they will believe things that contradict themselves within a very short amount of time. Where it's like, oh no, this is the narrative, this is the narrative. Okay, we're going to do a complete 180 in 72 hours. Now this is the new narrative. And nobody questions it. That yeah. That's the part that blows me. I mean, we, you know, we've seen this over the last couple of years. <laughs> that whole yeah. thing. I mean, I've been, I stopped doing flat earth things, as you may or may not know, and just railed against you know, the virus of unknown origin. 
you know, right. for, for just, I mean, just throwing it at people going, look, it's not what you think it is. And yeah, but, but yet there's still, I'm, I'm just glad that some of the restrictions have been pulled off and hey, all we had to do was wait two years. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah. I, I just hope you're wearing a mask right now. Oh, I am. I, I actually, I'm, 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 I'm wearing too. You can't tell. Oh, we feel much, much safer. Yeah. yeah, I think one of the things I remember Tom Woods, um, I've been familiar with Tom Woods or not, but anyway, Tom Woods, uh, libertarian writer, et cetera. Yeah. Um, he did a number of, I mean, just constantly just put out papers after papers just showing the data of oh, yeah. cases. And this, you just go month after month yeah. after month and show, showing how it made absolutely no difference whatsoever. And again, just the programming is so deep. Yeah, you're just going. I, I, I don't know. I don't even know what. What, what else can you? What else can you say? It was very revelatory. Obviously, since 2020, yeah. a yeah. lot of things as far as the human condition uh, have been revealed. And uh, I, yeah, and I was surprised. And I, I won't get into this too much. But I mean, I was surprised after two years, who was was drinking the Kool Aid and who wasn't on on my end. You know, I'm running right, into absolutely. people, people who swore, you know, people listen to my shows, people listen to that stuff. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm double and triple and all that stuff. I'm going, yeah. what happened? <laughs> and and it was it was one of two reasons. One was some sort of peer pressure family thing. Um, right. The other was just they they had to have faith in something. And it's like, look, mm -hmm. if I can't trust the government, who can I trust? And it's like, yeah, I guess that's a reason. But it's not the one I well, subscribe to. So that is interesting to me. Let me ask you this: yeah. the people that were saying that, when you say kind of on your side of things, are you referring to just basically like like basic family? Oh yeah, friends, just family. Oh yeah, friends. yeah, yeah. But I mean, because I would think within the movement that wouldn't necessarily be. Would you find like in the flat Earth movement? I would assume most of them, because it's in general. Yes. We, right? Yeah, I, I kept track. Most of I mean, there's a reason why we didn't do any conferences for the last two years, except for the Flattoberfest out in North Carolina. And that was we couldn't find any venues that would allow us to go without oh, facial sure. protection. Uh, but but yeah, most of the people in the community, in fact, almost all the people in our community uh, were absolutely perfectly fine on board. However, that's not to say, as you know, that there aren't pitfalls. Meaning, sure. in fact, I encouraged people, I was like, I go, look, if you develop some sort of cough, don't go to the doctor. <laughs> don't, sure. not now. And in fact, I told, you know, we won't get into this too much because we don't want to get you know, censored. But I told Rob's story to multiple people, you know, and, and we lost in our community a number of people that fell into the exact same trap that Rob did where okay. it's, it's like i'm not feeling good i'm gonna go to the doctors what's the worst that could happen it's like well let me tell you <laughs> there are well, that's, i now okay this is big for us because we're we're see now we heard of rob yeah but well before uh and uh, knew of his work because we would uh followed uh well first of all rob was one of the ones and one of the things that we cover here um uh, ufos and we'll go into that a little bit a little bit as well today kind of get your take on that because i've always been curious about it but sure. the idea of rob was one of the few um within uh evangelical christianity who would ever even touch the subject right and um and to to a certain extent uh, you had uh, chuck missler um uh, quite remarkable there but rob had been around for quite some time and we had um, really kind of followed his work and so then yeah um, you know, <laughs> we, we just heard, of course, a few things when we, when, when we heard, uh, first heard that he had passed, yeah. uh, all we had to go on were just a few, you know, we're just, we're just searching we're like, okay, well, who, you know, who, who knows what right. you see different posts on his, on his Facebook and people saying different things. I'm like, well, I don't, you know, I don't know how much of that's true. Um, so I, I thought, well, I'd love to, love to ask you about that. You're saying uh, what we heard and just kind of confirm or deny yeah. this. He, 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 he was uh, not feeling well. Yeah. I know there was a conference. He was there. Yep. Um, we also heard, is this, am I correct in this, uh, Loke, that it was people within like a certain, more than one person within a certain front row seemed to get sick or it was. No, that was that, that I heard from, from uh, different. I, I can. I can I could probably cut all through this pretty quick because I, okay. I, I was in touch with everybody the second it happened wow. which was 
So he went to the, the Take on the World conference, uh, a conference which I get invited to every once in a while, but uh, they don't. Uh, yeah, it's a long story. Anyway, but he, what a lot of people don't know is, is Rob has had lifelong asthma, right? And he right. does get sick every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Not a huge deal. And, you know, when you go to conferences or, or long things like that, where you're speaking and the, your stress levels are up and everything, you know, he, he developed a bit of a cold, which turned into just garden variety pneumonia. And he, if you know anybody that's had pneumonia, it's a tricky little thing. Because beforehand, yeah, you go to the doctor's office and they treat it with something. But eventually they'd send you home, usually, unless you have really good health care. Because you're going to be in there for a while. Right. And But most people, they'll, they'll just, you know, tough it out at home. It's like, it's going to be a month at least, you know. Yeah, and you're out. You're out for a while. Yeah, you're, you're out for a while. That's why the 80 and 90-year-olds die from it, because they can't tough it out. Yeah, exactly. It's, it is a, it's a really severe, you know, cold respiratory thing. And if you have asthma, it freaks you out a little bit because you're, you, you know, you have those moments where you're wondering, you know, is my body going to be able to, to hold this? You know, Rob's a strong guy, ex-military. Yeah. No, no worries. But he had this moment of doubt where... And remember, he had already known, you know, he'd been, this was not early on. He had known and, and he, his wife kind of nudged him into it and, and said, well, you know, maybe you should go to the doctors. And he gets to the doctor, to like to the lobby just before, you know, he's got to say goodbye to her because that's when you couldn't go in with family. Right. And the line was that he was all, all of a sudden he had, it's like, wait a minute, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. And, you know, maybe you, he told his wife, he goes, I, I've got a funny feeling that if I go in here, I'm not coming out of here. I'm coming out. Yeah. And what, and again, I don't want to go into this too much because, sure. again, for censorship, but but I want to mention, I want to at least clear the record for anyone on your side that, that may not know. So what they did was when, and the protocols, I think, still out there. There's one protocol. If you come in with respiratory issues, there's exactly one protocol, which is they, um, they will offer you up a ventilator and offer you remdesivir period that's right. that's the protocol right. there there is no other option and you know you can oh yeah they'll put you in a bed and you can you can wave that off but they're just going to keep coming at you and saying yeah. hey put you on put you on and they um they talked to him into it pretty quick and really that yeah and that was it he was intub- so he was intubated relatively oh yeah soon. yeah and and okay. what a lot of people don't know is if the what the number one side effect of having a ventilator on you is pneumonia, number one. Well, yeah. if you already have pneumonia <laughs> and then you're ventilated, that can't be good. That that's a that's a really bad thing. Excellent. Anyway, he held on for forty days, and that was it. And uh, he and he, he never did come out. And people were really really upset. And and uh, well, what, and 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 I was too. I mean, I was I was angry because I mean, come on, he was in our community. I was also angry that there were people, I, you know, I, and I told this, that exact story to a number of people. And I still watch some of those people run into the same thing because, uh, again, I don't want to drag this out because denial is the, the number right. one most predictable human response to everything, which is, yeah. well, I understand, you know, the Rob story, but it's not going to happen to me. And it's like, why, why, why wouldn't it happen to you? <laughs> it, yeah. it happened to Rob. Rob said it wasn't going to happen to him. So, and and I just watched this domino. So I watched a number of people run into this, and and you know, some people from our speaker tour, you know, people from that did conferences a couple of years ago, and this just blew my mind. So, uh, yeah, the the good news is, is that Rob's work will completely live on. He's all his content is still out there. His YouTube channel is not going anywhere. That is the one good thing about social media, I can say, which is yeah. because of the nature of social media, it doesn't come down. You could have died in a plane crash. It doesn't make any difference. The The only time it'll come down, ironically enough, is if you go out and do something horrible. You know, right. if you go out and just, to, you know, blowing away a busload of people. No, then it'll come down because they, they don't want your thing tied. They don't want negative stuff tied to whatever social media aspect it is. So, right. Yeah. There you go. Well, um, let me ask you this real quick while you just talked about Rob's content. Yeah. Um, his um, model of the sun and the moon yeah spinning has yeah. been it's popped up in every flat earth video since you made it yeah <laughs> and i'm wondering what is your take on that because he never said this is it he just said i took their math and put it into this program and 
and made it fly. Yeah, Rob ran into sort of the same hurdles that I did in that back in 2015, we didn't have a lot of, to go off of. And so right. Rob was working around with early models. This is way before the, the, the phone app came out. Um, and he was making, but he, I don't really have an opinion on it only because I can't shoot it down. I mean, it's, it's used out there. Hey, great. Fantastic. Yeah. The, my only criticism about any animation or any model that's ever drawn. And I try to clarify this to people up front is that because of the nature of how we see things, but like, for example, if you, you look at the, the, the dinner plate model with the sun and the moon above it, the sun and the moon are always completely oversized. They're way too bigger than they should be. And okay. which leads to the question, it's like, well, how can there be time zones if the sun's that big? Because you have to draw the sun just to make it visible on the model, to make it stand out. You've got to make right. it about 2,000 miles wide. Well, nobody in the community thinks it's 2,000 miles wide. That's the size of the moon. But if you try to draw it 50 miles wide, it's you can't even see it. It's it's almost in you, you literally cannot see it. It's just like this tiny little pinpoint of light that just like looks like a stupid blown pixel. So I, I Rob's model, along with everybody else's model, you know, I try to remind even the, every drawing I've ever seen. I'm going, yeah, I know the sun and the moon. It's not to scale, and it can't be. It, it, which doesn't. There's nothing we can do about it. So there you go. one of the things that I was very um, very much interested in is. When, when you talk about so the 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 snow globe idea right and of course touch that on on that uh, in, in the videos that he's mentioned as well yeah um did that seem to resonate with you as far as the um i can't remember the, the, the names of the of the project but high jump and so forth yeah yeah but the, yeah it did that seemed to make sense to you because the timeline was very fascinating yeah as far as when things happen and all of a sudden oh hey let's let's go to space oh hey let's Let's yeah. shoot up some, some every, nukes. Yeah. Every move, Rob was really good at picking up on this. He, he in fact, he worked it into a, a bunch of presentations, which I loved. Um, and he had a way of expressing it that was, you know, he, he loves, you know, flair for the, for putting the bullet point on things. Yeah. And yeah. what he was saying was that, yeah, in 19, basically he, he picked up on a thing that I picked up on, which was the night that 1959 was the year they started making huge decisions when it came to showing everyone what the world was. So if you found out what the world was, the, the concept is, if we didn't even, let me clarify for whoever's listening, we didn't even know, our best and brightest didn't even know what this world was until about 1960, because we just didn't have the tech to search for ourselves. You again, the, my my example from you, you've been the king of France in 1600, right? With more money than than anyone. Yeah. What are you gonna do with it? You got wooden ships, you got horses. What are you gonna do? You got nothing. You could have the best map ever. You can't go to Antarctica. You're, you're never gonna be able to do anything out there because it is so hostile. So right. once we got the tech, once the internal combustion engine was invented, and we had our planes, and our planes got better, got pretty better pretty quick. Yeah. all the way up till 1960 if you figure that out what do you do to what would you do to keep to keep this world hidden again we didn't build it what would you do to keep this world hidden and the moves that were made coincidentally were in 1959 the van allen radiation belts were announced nasa was founded in 58 right the wow. 1959 the van allen radiation belts were announced which said that nobody should ever go up really, really high because there's a whole bunch of radiation. You're going to die. It's going to kill you dead. Right. And also the outer, the, the, that Antarctica is off the limits. Nobody's going to ever own it. We're going to put a treaty in place and no, no corporation can ever go down there ever. And when you sign a treaty in, let's say, let's just call it 1960. And that says that nobody can even think about going to Antarctica as a corporation until 2040 that that's just mind-blowing to me yeah now it's 2022 it's down right. the road they're gonna they're gonna kick that can down the road of course other things are gonna happen before then but to announce that in 1960 and then hold to it i mean you gotta remember every treaty we've ever made in our civilization has been broken broken that, that's the whole point of treaties is they can make them and then certain little little time lapses it's like ah we're gonna break them and so all that happens in 1959, 1960, 
and Rob and and it made sense to him like like it did to me, which was yeah, that's what you would do. You seal off the outer marker and the upper marker, and ho just hold your breath and see if you can you know tie up the loose ends as best best you can. And for a long time that worked. Uh, they militarized space, and yeah. then the moon missions by 1972, which was not that much longer. By 1972, they said, oh, yeah, we've already gone to the moon uh, five, six times. It's gotten really, really boring. Nobody should even bother. You know, just forget about it. Good night, everybody. There's nothing to see here. Yeah, nothing to see here. And, and that's what that's one of the things that I picked up on was the, the blue marble shot. The famous blue. That was one of their undoings, which was the mm. famous blue marble shot from 1972, which was taken by Apollo 17, was the only full disc picture of the Earth photograph supposedly yeah. taken from the for the entire apollo program and then the second picture wasn't even taken until summer of 2015 which was 43 years later and it's like why would you oh i get it you see you were you were at that point you were scared and the longer you waited the more technology started to to ramp up and ramp up to where now they're scared to death of the internet crowd because all it takes is some nerd in the middle of Nebraska at 3 a.m. in his underwear, you know, right. to all of a sudden it's like, hey, those stars don't line up. And I'm going to post about this. And they do. And, and you know, then it's on there for forever and, and you're you're busted. So, so yeah. Well, okay, so let me ask you, what, is, what in your opinion is, because when I, when I look at what, what Musk is doing oh, uh, yeah, yeah. and I look at the whole idea of privatizing space. Right. Um, given corporate. So at first it seems like. Well, that's you know, uh, there's no way that there could be anything nefarious there because he's looking to he's looking to uh, to monetize on it and uh, right. and privatize it and take it out of the hands of the shady, not to be trusted government. But right. then again, major mega corporations have kind of replaced governments when it comes to certain elements of yeah. Uh, and so the idea I'm kind of curious about is is kind of your take on that. In other words, if if that's a thing where he's like, you know what, let's go to let's go to Mars. You know what, let's do this. Uh, yeah, okay, how, well, what thing? How, how does that even work from it, from that perspective of saying, okay, if that's in fact the case, if we're in, if we're in a globe, how the flip would would that seem like it's some sort of a feasible model? Yeah. First, uh, of revenue generation. First off, oh yeah. The first off, every let's let's back it up from from from, from the, the the macro, which is every story you have ever read about space when it comes in any media publication, all it is is to reinforce space. That's it. Every, I don't care if it's we're going to Mars or we're reclassifying Pluto or there's this funny spot on Jupiter or Saturn looks weird. All it is, it, you can just the subcontext, you know, like a frequency below everything is you're looking at space because you're on a globe, you know, Mars globe, Saturn globe, everything globe. Oh, hey, there's a comet coming close. You know, if I have to see every freaking month, in fact, I just put one in one of my forums. It's like every month there is a new asteroid that's going to be near Earth every freaking month. And you're like, they're not going to say it hits. It's like, why? In fact, you do this enough times, like, why hasn't an asteroid hit Earth? Why hasn't a comet hit Earth? Why we have six billion smartphones and no one's taking a picture, you know, any sort of video of a, of a rock hitting Earth? It's like, oh, yeah, you'll see a crater every once in a while. Mm -hmm. But it's like nobody ever sees it. As far as Mars goes, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to refrain from, from pulling out all of the other Elon failures. But when he made, I mean, because remember, he, he announced in 2017 that he was going to take tourists around the moon in 2018. Never even started that project. And, right. and I was like one of the first people to just yell at the top of my lungs. It's like, why are you running this story? No one in engineering history could ever run that sort of timeline that fast. He isn't even right. a rocket. And you, well, you, Elon, Elon's timelines are notoriously. Oh, they're just, they're just horrible. He just makes, he just throws out these statements. I almost think the government is using him in place of what Zuckerberg was supposed to be. You know, Zuckerberg mm -hmm. didn't start Facebook and he's just terrible on camera. He's got right. this deer in the headlights. He cannot talk. And Elon can't really talk either. But he makes these short little, I don't even know if he comes up with them or other people. He's like one or two sentences that are so off kilter that I just, I don't get it. When, when he talks about Mars, like, look, even if, Mar even if you could get to Mars, 
how physics is set up by mainstream science. You can't get there. It is a, even if you, it, first off, if you could bypass everything that we know about physics and get there, it's a one-way trip. It, you are done. You are, I, it's like, oh no, we'll build rockets on there and go back. It's like, uh-huh, because you're going to build an entire space you know, center there, right. even if you could. But the other thing is, because again, the, the the average person thinks that the solar system is just sitting like a like a dinner plate, you know, in in the middle of nothing, and it's not moving. It's like no, supposedly it's flying sideways at half a million miles an hour, which means if you had a rocket and you were going from here to Mars, you'd run into one of those no gravity, the one of those null points, and you would be gone. You would be you, the the solar system would just leave you in the freaking dust. And no, no different than dropping a golf ball out of a car window when it's moving at a high rate of speed. It's like, oh, yeah, that thing's going to bounce with you a couple times. And then that's right. it. That's it. You know, the car takes off and the, and the golf ball slows down and, and that's the end of it. So, no, every what I what my guess was is they wanted to distract from NASA and create, you know, it, SpaceX is NASA. They use all of NASA's launch pads. They're, they're right. partially financed by NASA. They've got NASA engineers working on there. It's like, where do you think these engineers came from? And they, and they, you know, they land back on NASA. It's like NASA, NASA is direct competition to SpaceX. There is no way you wouldn't have some Senate oversight committee that would jump in. It's like, well, if SpaceX is delivering all this stuff, why do we have to pay NASA $53 million a day? But, right. but no one wants to talk about it. They're just, just they just thought, you know, it's just the worst footage in the world. And they send them up there. And every, every time I bring, <laughs> they get the, the reason they get away with it is the same reason why uh, the, the Apollo missions got, got away with it. And that is especially in America. And I hate necessarily picking, there's too many teachers in my family, but we in the American education system teach people barely anything before they go, they leave and go out to, into the world. And that's especially true when it comes to biology and microbiology and chemistry and physics and engineering. I mean, we don't even don't even touch the subject on some of those. I mean, they're optional. They're only for the nerds, right? And so when I try to break down like the Apollo missions and why they're so terrible and especially the ISS and why it absolutely does not work. And I've got engineers and all sorts of subject matter experts calling me up. It's like, yeah, there's no way the ISS could do what they say it does. And, but again, because I'll give you one, sorry, one more thing. I know I ramble, yeah, yeah. I don't know. which is when I was over, when I go overseas, I ask people, you know, I say, look, I know, you know, the Americans rah, rah, wave the flag. I know why we believe in the moon missions and, and sp our space program. Why do you believe it? People of Sweden, people of Europe, people of Africa. Why do you believe it? And they all say the exact same answer, which is, well, because it was on television. <laughs> and and I, and I I just get this look in my eye. It's like because we would never lie about anything because we don't skew anything on television. But let me throw one more thing. When I was in Egypt, I'll give you a per perfect example. When I was in Egypt, I had a bunch of kids that were walking up to me. You know, I was at this uh, the Queen's Temple, and the kids are just staring at me like I was. This is way before flat Earth, years before flat Earth. And, and I asked the tour guide, he's like, what's up with the kids? Why are they staring at me like I'm the Loch Ness Monster? And they go, oh, you're the first American they've seen outside of television. And I go, and? So what? <laughs> and they go, they go, well, you know, you're, you're practically a rock star. You know, all the, all the you know, the, with the American lifestyle. And, and right. he, he starts going, and she's, he, she starts going on and I go, what television are you watching over here? And it's like, well, w the only American programs we get to watch are things like Dallas and Dynasty and Falcon's Crest and, you know, all, all these movies where all these American wealthy people and their little problems, usually when they're cheating on each other, and they all leave, live in mansions. And, and you show enough of those shows to people, the, the, the American myth, I mean, get a member over in the Middle East, they still call this the new world, still yep, right. to this day. Yeah. Anyway, it is sorry. that part is remarkable. I was just, you so know, it's, it's, it's Galaxy yeah. Quest, but all on the same. There you go. Yep, Galaxy Quest. I, that was one of my. By the way, thank you for bringing that. Up. One of my favorite lines ever was when they mentioned Gilligan's Island, and all of a sudden the aliens go, "Those poor people." <laughs> Those poor people. <laughs> it's oh like, my oh God. my God. Yeah. My one favorite of, line is, "Why don't you construct some sort of rudimentary lake?" As, which is to me one of the best lines ever in film was was, uh, was when he was chased by the by the by the rock monster and the. What, by, by the way, I have watched so many different things where people have said, 
the Galaxy Quest, funny enough, Galaxy Quest is one of the five best Star Trek movies in history. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it is not Star Trek. One of the best three. It is. I've, yeah. I've heard I've heard that the cast themselves the, the, the uh, it's known that like I think that uh, TNG uh, Next Generation cast yeah as well have said how much they uh, appreciate uh, a lot of it oh yeah and, uh, no it was it was a gem absolute freaking gem and they just nailed it nailed I was gonna it. ask something about the uh, when it came to okay so the proofs are there you got the you got the at the not that not, not the proofs uh, the clues. Yeah. Clues, yeah. the final clues. Um, over time, obviously, this has been a lot of time has passed since since you kind of started. Seven out. years ago, years remember in, 2015? <laughs> four score. Uh, remember um, Game of Thrones? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you remember Game of Thrones? Like, it's such remember a throwback. Remember immune systems? <laughs> Do you remember that? Oh man, those were those were crazy times. Oh, um, anyway, no, I was gonna. Say, so let me ask you this: um, when it comes to the clues and, and different things, yeah. um, over time, because here, here's when it comes to the to the whole flat Earth thing, mm -hmm. we've been uh, we've been just really fascinated by it, and uh, we, I, I check. I, I guess the way that I would say it, I check in every once in a while sure. to kind of go. All right, what's going on? You know, what's what's happening? Yeah. Um, and so over time, have you found that any of these clues or different things that seem to be like, well, here's something that's, you know, here's something that certainly seems to make sense. Um, over time, um, have any of those ever been kind of reversed? After no, no, because right? Has, no, no, okay. it's a good question by the way. No one's ever asked me that. I, well, nope. I mean, okay. Thanks. Go ahead. <laughs> He said, yeah, no, yeah. okay. <laughs> Get ahead. Get ahead. Um, yeah, no, but the, so, not, so nothing. No, nothing no, was... mostly because, um, mostly because they were so basic that right. it was, right. it's like, it's, they weren't exactly vague, but at the same time, I never told anyone to like run to the beach and, and, and look long distance with high definition cameras. I didn't tell anybody to take a temperature gun and start pointing right. at moonlight. Uh, right. I, I didn't tell anyone to start breaking down the difference, you know, the, the, the war between uh, the, a, pre a vacuum of pressure, you know, the negative pressure of a vacuum versus gravity right. and stuff like that. So the only thing that I, and I didn't use it in the clues, but I said it in my first interviews was I was a big fan of the, uh, the 1800s Orlando Ferguson map, and mm -hmm. where, which was kind of shaped like a roulette table. And okay. you were, it was mostly flat, but there were some things and people almost immediately called me up and they said, okay, you can't use it for two, you can't use that for two reasons. I go, why? They go, first off, it's perfectly flat because we're, look, we're going to the beach and we're looking over water and it looks perfectly flat. I go, yeah. And they go, the other reason is you can't use a roulette table because all the numbers of a roulette table add up to 666. And I go, what? <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> it's absolutely really? true. It's like, Really? <laughs> One to one to thirty five or whatever it is adds up to yeah, six hundred sixty six. Like yeah, true. But yeah, it's yeah. absolutely true. So no, everything else actually did pretty well. The the one clue that never got, I mean, you know, got a couple of chuckles was when I started saying that the uh, the magma system had to be artificial. Uh, but that's only because I could wrap my hand ar head around because no sci fi movie had ever really touched on it. That's why I think on, it, on what system now say again. Uh, the magma, the volcano system. Right, oh, mag yeah, yeah. Molten, molten rock has to be artificial. And, and people say, why does it have to be? I go, why would you leave anything? To, you're not going to leave anything to chance. You're not going to make it, you know, everything else artificial, you know, make like a terrarium for your lizard and then put some deadly, horrible <laughs> liquid metal thing underneath it that could, you know, completely erupt at any point. Well, vaporize. Well, well, no, Mark, I would. But that, you know, that's just, <laughs> well, yeah, that'd be I'm, part of the fun. Right? I'm a sadistic son of a bitch. <laughs> But anyway, but that's it's like you know I'm not we're not we're not going off of what I do. It's uh, but, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, sure. walk next to the volcano, Mister Iguana. What could happen? Yeah, it <laughs> it'll be fine. Yeah, it, uh, it'll be fine. No, but right, no, everything right. else everything else was fine. People gave me gave me grief for that, but hardly anyone brought it up in in inter interviews. So it's like, all right, fine, I'll take it. Were, were there were there some questions that you thought? Because you know, obviously, as this whole thing, because I'm always fascinated by it when it comes to thought process and how things how things develop yeah. uh, were there any questions that you thought when you were first looking at everything you go boy that's 
that's going to be a tough one. And it turned out not being all that tough or vice versa. Things yeah. Like, well, that'll be pretty easy. And then, ooh, that's actually a little trickier than I was I, thinking. I, for whatever reason, I, I just ran into dumb luck when it came. The the fact that the, your average person walking around the street is just a mouth-breathing troglodyte worked it to my advantage as well as i mean not yes not only do they not get things which is why you know you can you can you can throw these new concepts at them but they don't think a lot of people aren't three-dimensional thinkers including me most of the time which is why so I, when people say well, what's the weakest argument of flat earth like oh it's got to be the 24-hour sun in antarctica because it doesn't work with one light source you've got to have a second light source or there can't be 24-hour sun in antarctica and no, almost nobody brings that up. Almost no one. And I've done hundreds of these things, and nobody yeah. bring, brings that up because they're they're stuck on the the basic stuff, which is you know, oh, how can there be time zones and boats go over to the horizon? And haven't you been on an airplane, you idiot? You know that <laughs> that's sort of train of thought. Uh, but that's that's the only one that that ever bothered me. You got to remember that before I even made the clues, I had to sit down and think of everything i would ask and i that's what the, the challenge i made myself which was i go i'm not going to even move forward with this unless i've got an answer for basically everything for bit right if, you, if i if i can you know think of any question and i used to, i did, did tech support for years so I'm, I'm pretty good at you know trying to anticipate questions mm -hmm. and so when i put this out there i it still felt to me like a like one of those tests you turn in that you think you aced but you're not quite sure Right? Right. You're, you're, you've got that nagging feeling because everyone else in the class is still working <laughs> and you're like, right. it's like, man, is there another page to this? I Did I not? Yeah. And I, 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 I feel pretty confident, but I, I don't feel that I'm actually that much smarter than everybody else. Well, you don't, you don't, you know, I'm saying like, I think I'm smarter than everybody else, but, but I mean, uh, well, it doesn't, it, that's a good follow up, which is people have asked me, it's like, are you smarter than Einstein or, or Hawking? You know, people off every once in a while throw in gates and it's like, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> See how you throw him in here. It's like the man. The man said that 640k was per, plenty of computing power for everybody. It's like, it's like oh my god, the um, uh, which which was um, oh crap. What was my train of thought there? What was the the line just before this? Oh, uh, being being smarter. Than oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 yeah. The, boy, the, doesn't that screw up that whole thing? It's like, yeah yeah. I, that's proof. Well played, sir. That is proof. Yeah. I am not smarter than these guys. <laughs> no, I'm not smarter than Einstein or or any of the the people that are high level math. The problem is is that they run into the same problem that Tesla described years ago, which was he said that scientists have this horrible nagging tendency to not recheck the work of the person below them. So whereas Neil deGrasse Tyson will come out and say, oh, you know, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. The problem is, is that you never actually looked at the giant and see what he was standing on. You never, you never looked at the footing there. And so what happens is everyone just builds on the shoulders of everybody else and nobody checks the previous work. And so Tesla's argument was when you get up to a certain level, the equations mean nothing. They're just meaningless because the chances of them being right are slim, slim to none. And so, no, I don't have to be, because, yeah, some people have, have, have given me crap along those lines. Like, oh, you know, you're saying you're smarter. I don't have to be smarter. I go, all I have to do is be, you know, do something original. Think, think about something that they didn't or explore something they didn't. The problem with academics is, is that when you get up to a certain level, your master's in a physical science or PhD or whatever, is that you are so, you have spent so much time and so much money getting that education that the only the, you're you're locked in you the only thing you care about is your peer group and being um published and but we're not talking about book published we're just talking about you know paper published you know peer and the the scariest word for anyone in the academic community is ostracized if you get up to that level and for whatever reason you make a wrong move you, you know, your community shuns you. You know, it's a good old fashioned shunning and, and yeah. you're, you're out. And so, which is why it's so, so tough to get anyone in the academic community to talk to us, to talk to our, our circles, because, uh, they, if, if they don't, I, I treat it like a, like kind of like a boxing match. If you don't knock out flat earth in the first round, okay. they're not looking at us anymore. They're looking at you. And they're saying, why is Flat Earth still standing? Why haven't you taken care of Flat Earth yet? And the longer that goes on, even if it's a push, right? Yeah. 
they, yeah. they you don't want to be that guy. And we've I have seen people, and you know, where it's like you do not want to be those physicists that get into the the ring with us. And and lucky for you know for them, Neil deGrasse Tyson doesn't do interviews. <laughs> uh, Brian Cox thinks it's beneath him because well he's British, and Michio Kaku <laughs> just gets just gets angry. Because yeah. he thinks it's 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 like well you're one of those conspiracy people and then he lumps you in with everybody else, and that's uh, it. Yeah. Well, because because one of the things it's funny you mentioned the whole thing with uh, with magma because yeah, um, with and and I think we can all just take it a moment and really just think about what I said there and, and how funny that actually is, yeah. right? Can we just all laugh at that that I said that that was funny that you mentioned magma? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Okay, well, actually, all that. But I'll tell you why. Why? Uh, so, so there's a there's a for with my kids, we have a thing called Brain Pop, which is an app that for educational purposes. Sure. And uh, it it would they they were going through it, and one of the things that always bugged me a lot was um, whenever they talk about the shape of the Earth. Of course, this all comes. Uh, I had had the problem with this well before the the never looking into flat earth at all um but when, when they started looking into more things about flat earth and the whole concept it just bugged me that much more which is um uh, not clearly stating our profound ignorance in educational literature right so the the idea of saying well here's here's what the earth's made of really yep here's here's the crust yeah uh-huh Here's the mantle. Yep. Uh huh. And here's the core, and that's made of this, right? And we know that because right. And you, there's no, of course, there's no response. Uh, so we've the, the, the deepest we've drilled is less than one tenth of the crust. Right. Right. So we we don't we have literally no idea what's beyond. No, that. we don't. But, 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 but here's the. But yeah. it's it, it was stated so definitively. Right. In this. It's an educational thing that's to my ch children. Oh, well, here's here's what's going on. Yeah. Now, again, I, speculate all you want. I, I don't care. But be very clear what that is. Yeah. It's a speculation, it, pure and simple. And and I just it was it was so infuriating. And then when I now here's another thing that I've always so I tie that in a lot with the whole concept of the stars. I remember, and this was after first coming across, uh, I think your work. And a few others uh, regarding the flat Earth, which was uh, it was a local news broadcast. In a local news broadcast, this was the first time. So this was be obviously post 2015, so probably right. 2017 somewhere. Right. Um, I saw somebody in the local broadcast say, "Here is a, a shot of the, uh, the whatever, so whatever, whatever the news story, like you said about space. Yeah. Well, it's going to sit there to per perpetuate the idea of space. Sure. Uh, the astronomers have now found this new star that could be in the Goldilocks zone. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Uh, uh, here it is, and th this is the raw footage from the telescope. Right. Now, what was that raw footage? It was uh, four pixels. Right. Now, I just remember thinking. What the H? Yeah. Because because at that point, I'm going, are you freaking kidding me? Yeah. Are you saying that literally this is what they're seeing? And then, um, so now, from from what you're saying, I guess I was, that's one of the issues that I've always wanted to have more of a deep dive and confirmation from mm -hmm. is, is that actually what, like the best images that we have right. from the best telescopes, is it is it not, I mean, is that true? Oh yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, it's, if, just, if, it's just pixelated. Here's a light. Well, of course. And, we know what to, and they they talk about how uh, planets or different things that surround this star yeah. is because it'll go out for a brief time, and that's a planet going in front of it. Right. That, literally, what they say. Yeah. And 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 when you when you when it, like if that's actually true, and again, I I I have not. I've looked into it a little bit to try to confirm it because I'm like, that's some of the most ridiculous shite I've ever seen or heard. Right. But if that is actually true, then you're going, why? Why are we listening to anything these people say ever? 
uh, it's just, it's, it's so remarkable. I did, and that's a wonderful point. The reason why, again, they, they get away with it, and I did a clue on it way later. You know, a lot of people say, oh, why'd you do more clues? Like, people, people didn't really ask for them, to be honest. You know, the, the clues seemed to be enough, and then everyone just ran off in other directions with all sorts of fun new things. Um, in fact, nobody even bothered to make their own clues. They just started doing their own thing. Um, but I made a clue called the Code of Credibility which I said, uniforms play a big part in our world the, in, in terms of impressions. You know, uh, it, it's, you can, the old saying, you know, you can tell about a lot about a man by how he's dressed. But, but, it's, but it's true in that, you know, cops inspire a certain thing and firefighters inspire a certain thing. And Absolutely. lab coats inspire oh, something else. Huge. Yeah, Dude. if you wear a white lab coat, and and we proved this. I mean, I I recommended to people down in uh, our Los Angeles group. I said just wear lab coats and and carry clipboards. Go down to um, the corner of any street. They will talk to you. People will talk to you <laughs> because they think, oh, it's some brainy guy that wants to talk to me about something. You know, maybe I'll 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 glean some enlightenment off of this well-read fellow. And but it but it's true. And so when it comes to anything that nasa says anything that they say it is treated like the gospel because of, the, of science because that's those are the men i mean i have heard so many so many people tell me it's like well you know they know better than me they're smarter than me. it's no different than what elon musk even though he's not dressing any differently it's just a media uniform they're putting on top of him where he, you know people, elon's got this impression now it's like oh he's he's a freaking genius he's the new he's the new stephen hawking it's like where where did that come from uh, when it comes to, to space exploration and anything that's in the sky, though, yes, they can say whatever they want. And for the most part, people, you know, they make note of the headline. They don't even read the whole article. And they're like, right. oh, well, look at that. And they don't, they, what they don't do is they don't analyze the, the relevance of the, the data that's being thrown in there. Like a planet being in the, in the Goldilocks zone that might be, I don't know, 100 light years away, 10,000 light years away, doesn't make any difference. If it's even half a light year away, you're not going. No one's right. no one's going until you can come up with faster than light travel. Nothing no nobody's going anywhere. So you you'd be better off looking for some sort of stargate at that point. Well, that's yeah, and so I so this is another things I was So from from what you heard because this and I don't know again, I cuz I literally I no no clue on this one. Yeah. Is the, the 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 pictures that we're seeing yeah obviously when it comes to, to planets it's just a complete and total joke oh yeah which is yeah 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 uh, there there are wonderful there are wonderful videos yeah. about nasa there's a whole art department in nasa and sometimes they subcontract out and, and they're, it's not even a secret they will take the data the raw data the right what they say is the raw data and they will shoot it even that's you know you got to question that and they send it off to an art department they say okay we would like this zone to give this sort of impression you know with these sort of colors maybe a little glossy maybe a little nebulous depending on what you know and and that was the same because again the, why wouldn't you the the, the old uh the, the the saying which i love i love using which is mark twain which is never let the truth get in the way of a good story right. which is yeah. you're going for ratings Be, the yeah. media over the last 50, 60 years has changed from news reporting to be mostly because of competition to straight up, we've got to entertain you or we're gonna lose sponsors. And that applies to everything. So we've yeah. got to make space look sexy. We've got to make it interesting. We've got to come up with, we, you know, all these different stories to, to drag you in. And at the same time, the government completely endorses it because it reinforces space. It's, it's a very symbiotic relationship and it works for the most part. I mean, again, the, the, the Tesla Roadster in space, a great example of it, which was okay. this red convertible in space. People are seeing the shots, the, the live feed, and they're not even questioning the physics. It's like, there's no way. It's like that car, nothing's happening to that car at all. The windows don't spider web, nothing melts, nothing detonates from pressure differences. No, nobody questions that and it's perfect camera work perfect transmission until the second they turn it off and send it to mars they just turn it off it's like well the battery was going to run out anyway it's like <laughs> what <laughs> and, and supposedly it's on its way to mars and it's like yeah and and the, and the car supposedly came straight from tesla's garage and it's like, oh, 
just drove me. I mean, I was so infuriated when I I was in Canada when that thing happened, and someone sent me the shot, and I remember saying you know, I was accusing like Jaron or Bob from Globusters, you know, of, of making it. it's like who made that shot, and then they come back and say, no man, that's a live feed, and I go and what? <laughs> yeah, what? How's <laughs> that? You, uh, yeah. You, are you kidding me? It's a live feed. Yes. Yeah. Or right or there. one more real quick, which is the Red Bull jump where. It, it, the the curvature was so severe in all the pictures that it made it look like even Neil deGrasse Tyson came out and said, oh, it's scientifically dishonest. And I asked producers, I go, why are you running this shot? I go, it's right. absolutely, unless the the world is the side of, size of New Mexico, it doesn't make any sense. And they go, <laughs> they go, yeah, but it's a good image. I was like, uh. They're looking at it from an extreme sports. Yeah. Uh video like hey check out this cool skateboarding trick yeah uh, fish eye lens yeah yeah but but, but we don't it's cool. yeah but you don't want to tell yeah. people that in the article no. No. yeah yep interesting thing you pointed out about tesla's um the actual tesla not the fraudulent yeah yeah tesla. yeah not not by uh, the way that's going to happen pretty soon he's going to change his last name to tesla but go ahead <laughs> it's his grandson i'm sure yeah i'm sure no <laughs> Uh, you said that they're standing on the shoulders of giants. They don't look at the shoulders that they're standing on. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that me and uh, Cap have looked into is um, where did that theory come from? And all the way back to the math, I think it was Rupert Sheldrake, was it, that said it? He was talking about they couldn't figure out a certain point, so they all agreed that that was going to be the answer to the math. Yeah, it was it was scientific um, consensus. It was like, all right, so we're gonna go and we're gonna build on this. And if they do that too many more times or any times at all, by the time you get to wherever we're going, there's nothing that's even legitimate there anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah Rupert Sheldrake said something to the effect of there was there was a, a problem with um, uh, something that they were basically. It was, it, there was an inconsistency with a certain rate sure. of light, and uh, or the or the movement of, of it, and it, they could it it was said to be a constant, but it was not in fact. And then like they so when he went to look at it, look at the details, and nobody else really did. Uh, he goes, "We're getting these uh, discrepancies," uh, and it was yeah, of course he was at in uh, I think it was at Cambridge, if I'm not mistaken. But basically, where they make the you know the weights and measurements, the in other words, here, here here's where the the, fo the foundation is laid of what what we know this to be. Yeah. And when they said, well, he goes, well, we're getting this and this and this and this. We're getting at least uh, seven, eight or more uh, different numbers and different values for this particular measurement. And they said, he goes, yes. He goes, well, how did you ever get that reconciled? He goes, well, we goes, well, we fixed it. Yeah. He said, well, well, what do you mean fixed it? He goes, well, we agreed that it was just going to be this. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I go, well. That's uh, that's something. Yeah, kind of, uh, kind of like when <laughs> when Van Allen, after he announced the the radiation belts in 1959, when mm -hmm. Kennedy, you know, Kennedy comes out a few years later, screws everything up and says, you know, we choose to go into the moon this decade, you know, and right. and then they have to go back to Van Allen. It's like, yeah, how are you guys going to get through that, right? And he's like, right. so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go real fast. <laughs> it's, it's like what? That's your line. By the way, I, I, I snuck a picture into Skype for you there, um, yeah, which that. is an interesting shot that most people don't know. You know, the, the people are connected. So like in the dead center, you'll see Albert Einstein. This is 1921 outside, I believe, the um, uh, the RCA um, transfer station out in New York. So that's Albert Einstein, you know, right there, almost dead center. But right yeah. behind him over his left shoulder, that's Tesla. Oh yeah, yeah, and of right. course I'd love. I'm gonna have to look this up. I'd love to know who the super villain is in the middle. <laughs> I mean, that yeah. guy is certainly certainly has that look. Yeah, I think that's, like... that's the coroner from uh, Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, yeah. I, I, it's like I it's like I'd like to see that guy's lab, <laughs> and you know yeah. that's one of those secret files that was probably more of an underground layer. He he was in a he was probably in a Hellboy movie, which was never made. <laughs> It was never made. Yeah. Um, well, see, one of the things um, I, I was very, very curious about, and I wanted to get to uh, a few of the things and um, enjoyed the conversation thus far. Sure. Of course, things time flies. Yeah. But um, okay. One of the things that comes up 
Here we go. 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 Yeah, hit it. It's more Dolly Parton. No. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> this is, we're, we're a, you, you wouldn't have known this. There's no way for you to know this part, but we're a very uh, Dolly Parton oriented type of show. Oh, why wouldn't you be? <laughs> and why wouldn't you be? Come on. Um, no, so when it comes to uh, the Flat Earth Movement, um, there's, there, there seems to be uh, a big thing when it comes to uh, the, the, the prominent voices, right? Yeah. Who are out there and who are saying their things. And then it comes to the, um, the division that happens. Sure. And I always, I'm always curious about that, and I find that fascinating. One, just because why in the world, why in the world would there be uh, much division if you're already going to be one of the most ridiculed groups of people um, in the in the world uh, yeah. at that point, um, if if that's something that you're deciding to go with. But I'll, I'll just I'll just put it this way. Um, I, j I just heard uh, uh, before this I heard an interview that you did, um, and you were referring to uh, Eric Dubé and sure. Eric Dubé. And according to that one, and this was, I'm not sure exactly how long ago this one was recorded, but on that interview, you said that you haven't actually officially ever spoken with him. Yeah. Is that, A, is that still true? Yes. Okay. Um, and then B, can you please tell for our audience um, your account of your first encounter with the personage, with the personage of Mr. Dubé? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And his cohorts or whatever you were before. So, and what, what they asked and, and, and asked of you and, and, and told you. Yeah. I thought that was fascinating. So fascinating. almost immediately, I mean, you got to remember, when I started getting into this, there was not a lot of Flat Earth content out there. And I was focusing, most of my stuff I was focusing was on Matt Boylan uh, from Montreal, Canada at the time. And otherwise known as Math Powerland, because that's what oh, you okay. change your name to. And it, it, I'd done like my third interview. It was just a small podcast. You know, early on, I hadn't done anything yet. I hadn't done Coast to Coast. I hadn't done anybody. And somebody from Eric's camp, from the, the website IFERS, you know, International Flat Earth Research Society, uh, got a hold of me on Eric's behalf and said, yeah, Eric's not very happy with you. He, he wants you to make some changes for your, for your next interviews. Um, I'm going, what? Eric's not very happy with you. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Eric's not very happy with you. Again, the, the supervillain thing. It's like, I'm, am I talking to a mob henchman? What, what's happening? And Yeah, and, his, and I'm sorry, and his people, uh, what does that even mean? Yeah, well, he's got, well, at he, he has loyal followers that manage a lot of his stuff when it comes to online content they are huge okay. they are rabid supporters i mean they go into every video i make and make comments they go into every chat room live chat room that i'm on and they make comments every time his channel is burned down they build it back up he's got more subs than i do and his channel's been burned down at least twice that i know of for hate speech wow. right and so when he went, but I didn't know who he was at the time because n nobody, right. nobody knew anybody that was doing flat earth because yeah. flat earth wasn't a thing at the beginning of 2015. And, and I remember doing this interview and they say, okay, first off, you've got to, what was it? You have to stop using the Orlando Ferguson map, like, which I ended up not using, which was fine. But the other thing he says, you, you, you can't mention Crow 777 anymore when it comes to moon footage. And I'm going, yeah, what? Why not? It's the best footage out there. And he really wouldn't let go of that to where, I mean, and I don't know why. I don't know you what the, what the, exactly the reason was. And, you know, something along the lines of his, of Crow's affiliations. And and it's like, what? Look, I go, I, and I tried to tell his people. I was like, look, I'm going to use the best moon footage that's out there. I go, if you can find something better than Crow's, by all means, shoot it to me. <laughs> and nobody, nobody did. Right. I mean, well, you, well, you, I mean, it's understandable that you'd want to say that to his people. Right. I mean, I'm sorry, just the fact that he has people. Yeah, the fact that he has people. And that's not an exaggeration. He has people. So the part of me. Um, he's he's, he's yeah. one of those, uh, he's a blessing and a curse in that the, 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 the lucky thing about us is, is that he is stuck in Thailand. I don't know exactly why, but I heard from a very reliable source who talked to him directly mm -hmm. that he won. He was part of a class action lawsuit against a government contractor years ago where he got, mm -hmm. I don't know, a couple hundred grand in cash, right, settlement. And he's used that money. This is back in, I think, in the 90s. 
and went to Thailand because your money goes a long way in Thailand. You know, you can you can set yourself up, especially if you're going to be a yoga instructor and and all this <laughs> stuff. You you can you can write your own ticket over there if you oh, yeah. if you want to live in Thailand. And but something kept rattling around his head to where he thought, or he still does, he thinks he's on a no fly list, and okay. that can be problematic if you're in Thailand because if you if you think you're on a no fly list and you come over to the states to visit your family or whoever, yeah. and you now are on a no-fly list, how are you getting back to Thailand? Do you go up to Vancouver, Canada? Do you go down to Mexico City? How exactly do you get out of the, you know, you have to go to another country just to get back to your own country, unless you want to take a long boat over to Thailand. Right. That, that would take a couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah. So, yeah, so that was that was my experience with Eric. I mean, he's just... It's, uh, and it's, the thing is, if... It, he is one of the most articulate people and individuals sure. out there that I've seen yeah. and heard and the stuff that he puts out. I'm like, well, that's, that's very oh, yeah. compelling. Puts a, a lot of good content. Except he does he have any did he have any influence on you before you made the clues? No. No, I, I literally did not know who the guy was. The the him. only the only guy who had influence on me was was uh, Matt Boylan. And only in that I got one of those weird chills up of the back of my neck when I was listening to the only coherent video that Matt ever made because he was sober in one exactly one video. Where chills or shills? What was that? Chills. Chill. Chills. That's chill. funny. Oh, chill. By the way, thank you. Yeah, I see what you did there. That was good. <laughs> so yeah, I got I got a shill that went up the back of my spine. So. <laughs> Which is a follow-up question, but we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. So, but when Eric, when when Matt was talking about his his NASA party story, which was was put into the documentary, and I believe it because it's 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 a per, I mean it's a great Twilight Zone episode the way it was framed, and there was no embellishment on his part. He just his his girlfriend at the time just sat him down on a morning. It's like you're sober. Record this. Go. <laughs> And yeah. um, and that was the only one that, in, that influenced me. Every, nobody else was out there. I mean, the, um, the Eric Dubay. I, I didn't. I literally did not know who he was until I was contacted by his people. And then I, the, the people thing is just it just it's such a it's, a, it's an odd. It's thing true to though. I don't I don't have people that go around to every single video that that other people make and just start making comments and they all say the same thing. It's like you should have interviewed Eric Dubay. My God, if I had a nickel for every time I saw that posted somewhere, it's like oh, yeah. you should be well, interviewed next day. It's like, yeah. yeah, I've often said, uh, uh, well, I mean, for example, <laughs> because to my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, because it's been a, it's been a long time since I've kind of gone into that aspect of it, but yeah. Eric Dubay was kind of one of the first, if whatever, to 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 name you as a shill, correct? Yeah, in 2015. Of, I mean, it's still out there. It's a 2015 okay. post on his Eifers forum called Wall of Shame and I am number one with a bullet. And wow. and it, I'll get, yeah. let me throw out one more thing real quick. Yeah. I can't undersell his, I can't oversell his influence here, which was in the documentary, which was kind of glossed over this part, which was he was telling people, he told like uh, ODD TV, you know, a bigger channel, um, mm -hmm. that that I was a government agent and, and that no one that listens to ODD TV should go to the conference, the first one in Raleigh, North uh, Carolina. And there was this part, and you gotta remember, there were at least 150 seats in the back of that thing, maybe 100, 150, that were empty, but sold. Meaning they convinced people that had already paid, it was a non-refundable conference, <laughs> to just abandon their money, and not go to the conference because we were, you know, if you went there, you were obviously going to be surveilled by by the government. That's like, right. it's like, wow. And 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 the only reason he wasn't one more thing, the only reason he wasn't in the documentary is because of the whole anti-Semitic thing, uh, where the producers once they this found is, that out, yeah. there was just you could hear the pen crossing him off the list. Alex Jones uh, has a thing that he said over many years um, about David Icke. Yeah. That was uh, early on, um, you know, I'm all on board with whatever David Icke said, but then there's, you know, he gets to that one point and then it's just a turd in the punch bowl. And that's a pretty good impression, by the way. Uh, it's not that good. But, but the, but the, the thing with, I just remember going to his site at one point yeah. and I'm, you know, casually going through. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's why well, that's, those are interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Now those things there, the proofs and, 
then uh, something about what the what the Jews, what the AIDS. <laughs> I just remember going. I was like, "Are you serious?" Yeah. And it was it was such a shock. Yeah. Uh, to to see, and it reminded me of the whole turn the punch. Well, point. that's like, exactly what Eric did. Eric Eric would make video after video. It's like flatter, flatter. You know, fifteen flatter videos in a row, and then and then a video. It's like how why Adolf Hitler is the greatest man in the world. And, need, and it wasn't a purifying win. And it wasn't what? short no. either. It was four <laughs> hours long. And it's like, what are you doing? And to where <laughs> I had producers calling me up. I mean, remember uh, there was a whole bunch of producers that want to talk to this guy. And they all said they all said the same thing. It's like, look, you've got to make it clear to him that he will never be spoken to by anyone because you know right. the, the Jewish community has a huge influence in the entertainment industry. They just, they always have. And it, it were in media. And and right. that was very true. No one, with the exception of Eddie Bravo, ever really interviewed him for anything major. So, yeah. Yeah, as, as, as uh, I remember one of my favorite uh, Norm MacDonald bits when uh, his joke about um, Brando, like uh, saying that, uh, <laughs> saying that he, that the Jews ran Hollywood. And right. Brando made it a, made, made an apology to the Jewish community and they uh, accepted it and made a statement that he's free to work in Hollywood again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very true. <laughs> anyway, well, it's, but no, but, but it's, it's an interesting thing because I think when you, you know, something like that, yeah. um, and this kind of goes into the other question that I had when you look at the thing with, with Shills, yeah. do, do you think, because look, Eric seems to be the, the greatest candidate, yeah. just if, if, from a, from a, preliminary scan right. of the environment it seems to be the greatest candidate for what would be I, I would categorize as a shill whatever that would mean um just just because of the things he's saying and, and the sowing of division and then putting the obvious right uh or the punch bowl thing there but, uh, but let me ask you this yeah. um having been kind of a you know one of the founding members of kind of what's going on in this movement right. now right. uh being uh, since 2015 yeah. do you think there are actual shills that are out there and 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 so forth is that something that you think actually no exists? i know i you're not the first person to ask that and and no and and by the way i don't i don't even think eric's the the most likely candidate um he uh, i don't really? i don't think he's a shill he's just an asshole yeah. <laughs> he's just there's nothing he's, he's just <laughs> one of those guys but that you, you, but you think he actually that's something that you actually believe like he's you think he's legit he legitimately believes all those things that he's reporting. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's not. And look, right. he's the the anti-Semitic community is is big out there. And I mean, the first people first want to tell people. I go, look, you got to look at the positives. And 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 people they get yeah. they get there's some envy because look, the, the the Jewish community has two very very strong traits. One is banking, obviously. Right. right. The other is they have a, a very very keen sense of entertainment always have yeah. they know what works they they can look at something i mean you remember like the creator of seinfeld wasn't really seinfeld it was larry david, larry right? david and yeah. the the running joke was if you could make him laugh you mm -hmm. knew you knew you had something there um yeah. you combine that sort of money with that sort of keen entertainment that's basically one plus one equals producer that's that's all it is it's just <laughs> and there's right. tons right. of them there's tons of them out there in in every <laughs> level of entertainment when it comes to is are there any shills in the community no because there doesn't have to be um they they realized there was enough infighting with egos and people that just didn't want to play well with others and let's not share our toys that sure. and is, could there be could there be government people that are inside sure but are they part of the speaking tour no are they making any content no uh okay. they they don't have to uh the um i have never met anyone in the speaking tour they get found out too quick they, so? Because eventually, which was why I've been accused of many, many things, it's like eventually you're going to have to, if you want to derail Flat Earth, you have to go off road. You know, you, you take yeah. them up to a point and then you'd be like, and we're, and where, what road would you go? The only mm -hmm. person that I even thought remotely, and I put this in the book, um, uh, that I thought was suspicious was Patricia. Not because I thought she was a government agent, even though she would be the perfect candidate to be hired for some sort of alphabet group. Um, right. It's because her backstory was just so damn weird, you know. She, you know, she just made no sense. You're referring to Patricia. Steer, yeah, Patricia Steer. I mean, she was. I mean, plus, you know, she eventually left 
the um the the whole i've only i've only thought that every single time i ever heard her. <laughs> yeah yeah she's well i mean one she 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 dealt with a lot a lot more than other people i mean she was a triple threat she was you could tell. she was a pr- she was she was attractive she was rich and she was jewish <laughs> Right. She was, I mean, you couldn't have asked for any worse things, you know, attract, I'm sorry, attractive woman and rich and Jewish. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You always you're, go, it's a conspiracy. Yeah, like, you're, like you're it's the, like a, a trendy uh, flip-flop or something. That she's <laughs> plus, plus, also don't forget, she never made a single Flat Earth video. Not one. She oh, in, right? she interviewed people for, for Flat Earth, but she never made a, a Flat Earth video on her own. Now, I know she wasn't really super tech savvy, so she could, I suppose, blame that. But she also was the type of person that would absolutely, you know, have people do their home her homework for her. So she could have had people make videos for her if she wanted, but she never, ever did. No, no. She just, I mean, I spent a lot of time with her, and every time I was with her, it's like, man, I don't, I just still trying to, I mean, it was like... She was, uh, and I know she's heard this before, which is, uh, it's like you took an alien and you just put him in a box with a pile of money and some DVDs and just dropped him on the ground and let him go. And she pops out and, and runs off and, and does her own thing because, you know, she was, she never really had to, do, I mean, yeah, she owned uh, her own clothing store and stuff, but that was with her own money and she inherited a, a bunch of money and uh, she was just so weird. Oh, she was well, so weird. In the, in the composition of uh, so like obviously you have egos definitely are kind of a thing um, I think and for everybody obviously but when you when you start getting into anything even the be the UFO community uh, any kind of conspiracy movement yeah um, there's just a thing of well I need to be heard and I think part of that can go to the fact that just well I you know I would love to do this full time. Right. And uh, to do that, I need to be seen and I need to be heard right. and I need my stuff to be valued. Right. So I OK. So if that means, uh, you know, well, somebody else says something might be a little more uh, acceptable or maybe a little more believable or it might be a little more well put together. Well, if I can, you know, maybe uh, eh, throw a little shade over here. Sure. Uh, because then I, I might be. Maybe I'll be, you know, to more conferences. I don't, I don't know, but I'm just saying just the whole ego thing seems to definitely be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, don't, don't forget corporate espionage exists for a reason. Because the, the, right. when, when you get to a certain competitive level, everyone, yeah, it, it, you've got people fighting for the same stage light. And mm-hmm. some people yeah. graciously will, will share with others. And other people is like, no, it's going to be mine. The, the Matt Boylan thing from the movie where he demanded i mean everybody else was absolutely on board doing the stuff in the documentary but he's like no i want money up front i want percentage of the gross and i want mark condemned <laughs> during the movie as being a government agent slash hollywood producer slash i don't know what what else he, he was accusing me of but but yeah, it happens all the time. I mean, ODD you know does it sometimes, yeah, I and I have not heard any of those. Like you know, like I said, because I, I, we don't. Oh, I've been as, accused. I've been accused of. I I read a list. It was one of my things at the end of the conference. Uh, in fact, it's one of the outtakes for the movie, where I was. Read, I mean, I was accused of so many different things, and I couldn't convince people otherwise, because like like here's a no good deed goes unpunished, which didn't make sense to me for a while, but now I know. Um, where someone says, hey, I want to make a web page for you. Uh, I think it was MarkSargent.com or MarkKSargent.com. And uh, I'll, I'll split the money with you. I'll make it a pay site. It's like, great. Do I have to do anything? No. Just make a couple links to your uh, your thing. Maybe maybe some make some of your videos exclusive to the website and I'll take care of the rest. It's like, great. Fantastic. And then, but he was using this template to make the, the website that was, that predated Flat Earth by like okay. five years. And, but he began, that was just a template, right? The templates, you know, templates can go back as old as the computer. And, right. he, and people looked into that. And it's like, oh my God, this, this must mean that the creator of webs, the, of the website has got the, whose name was um, Joe real. That's yeah. gotta be Mark Sargent. And, and it's, which means because he was a Hollywood producer or a, a small time producer in San Diego. It's like, no. In fact, I had to drag Patricia, Patricia had me drag him on our show just so the two of us could be in the same room, right? And wow. and then they they as soon as that as soon as like oh well it's got to be this guy Ralph Real, 
his father, right? The, the other guy, Ralph Ria, that's who Mark Sargent is. He's Ralph Real. It's like, well, when we prove that, it's like, then they just moved down the list. It's like, okay, well, he's obviously the vice president, uh, Dennis Sluka. And they just kept, wor- it's like, no matter what answer you gave them, as long as people like Eric and, and ODD, and it's like, as long as they kept, you know, s- staying the course and saying, oh, Mark's an agent, Mark's an agent. Pff, people just made the narrative fit. However, however they saw it, I was like, all right. I, I well, one of the things you're saying o- ODD said that too. Well, yeah, but only because of Eric. And ODD, you, whatever, whatever there's Eric. Proof that you're not is that you just posted the next level video, which is ODD. I know, I know. I again, <laughs> which is I, a great I, video. I know. I I I, tr- I do that because it's like, look, I've got nothing against these guys. If you want to call me stuff, that's fine. I I. What's that line from from Ghostbusters? It's like it's like I, don't care. I got people lining up to abuse me. It's like you want to you want to do this? Fine, go ahead. I go. I'll still you know post your stuff because I don't care. Yeah, I go. I'm not accusing you of stuff. I'm gonna be the better man. I'll do this. Uh, and yeah, and OD, by the way, they never even asked me to be part of it. Fine, great. <laughs> go. I, li- go I nuts. literally just found. I just literally watched that video and I I bought it. I went ahead, and bought it. Why? Because it was on your site. Oh, thanks. I had nothing to do with I, it. I went, I went there and I was like, oh, okay. I was like, so I went to their, went to the link, and then they said, oh, well, you can get the, you know, whatever the high quality. But I'm like, okay, well, I'll support people who are doing good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, Hibbler Productions you know, does you know, does wonderful work, and and he, he makes a one big video at least every at least once a year, and he's done great stuff. I, you know, and one of the things I've always appreciated about you is um, um is the fact that you don't necessarily. In other words, look, I'm. I, you know what am I? I, I kind of like like me. I don't have anything bad to say about somebody. If if you know if you're if you're going to ask me specifically about something, right? Which we which we did on this show. Right. We asked you specific. Okay. Here's here's your encounter with Eric Dubay. Uh, here, here's something. Can you just please tell us kind of what your experiences were? Outside of that, I've never once heard you go out of your way to say have any kind of uh, unkind word about anybody. And that's one of the things that. Um, I've always appreciated about you. And I think long term, um, I think that's one of the things that's definitely going to follow you as your legacy is the fact that, look, whatever you think, if you agree or disagree, um, Mark is, is one of the nicer guys out there. Thank you. Uh, and uh, fact that, that, you know, and that's just that that leaves for people such as myself, that leaves a huge, huge impact and uh, impression well thanks i mean again i i try to stay the course and that yeah i i don't i don't think of anybody as an enemy uh, in fact even eric even though he's condemned me and i made his wall you know his big his his nixon <laughs> his nixon style enemies list it's like it's like look i in fact i i've said it on air many times like look make flat earth videos all you want your other personal biases just make another channel for that just do something right. else because every time you do it you're missing opportunities maybe under a different name maybe under a different picture yeah right yeah anything <laughs> it's, like, it's like i get it you got strong feelings towards it which is why i made my my now infamous speech about the eskimos about how much i hate them you know i i it's like i you know their 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 building techniques are dangerous the their animal cruelty is off the charts and i think their sense of clothing is horrendous and it's, it's questionable at best. It is. It's very, it's very questionable. And I, and I hate them. And, and my point is, does my never quenched burning hatred of the Eskimos have anything to do with flat earth? No, it doesn't. So why would I talk about it? <laughs> why, why would I include it in any, any of my channels? I don't. So, which, when, you know, try, me trying to be cute, I'm trying to say, look, just do your own thing. You be you. But don't bring it into our community. And he again, he missed out on a lot of stuff. He could have, he could have been. And I don't, you know, even to this day, he, he will not, he will not change his mind. He just like, nope, that is me. It's what I'm doing. It's like, okay, yeah. fine. Let me ask you something real quick without going into another five hours to explain it, if you can. Yeah. That I heard from Dubay for the first time, and obviously we've looked into it since then. Dinosaurs, yes or no? <sighs> Yeah. Yes, but 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 not in the way. Well, I I try to say this because there's so many in our community. It's like oh, they just keep following David yeah. Weiss's lead. And I was like, oh no, they can't be real. Do I think there are giant lizards around? Sure. Do I think they're from millions of years ago? No. Which is why I bring in the whole coelacanth argument. 
which is coelacanth. Everyone's like 70 million years extinct. And then it's like, okay, except for the ones that are swimming around Africa right now, except for those. And then I, then, which is why I bring up like the Loch Ness Monster. Love the Loch Ness Monster. And I say, are there plesiosaurs swimming around deep water lakes like this one in Scotland? And they say, no. I, they go, why? Because they've been, they've been extinct for at least 100 million years. Oh, you mean like that fish over there? The one that you were absolutely dead, right. dropped dead wrong on. So, right, right. But, do I, do I, but I do think the carbon dating system is so screwed up. I go, it's not even remotely accurate. So I do, do I think there were big things? Sure. Do I think that some of them could have been manufactured for the narrative sake? Yeah. Why not? I mean, hey, museums, you know, curators need Porsches too. So <laughs> that's true. And I've, I, yeah, I mean, if I, if I, if yeah. I had, if I had one hundred million dollars for every time I've said that, <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd have a lot of money. Yeah. So, so not, not, I, necessarily, I, not necessarily because, not necessarily because I haven't said it a lot. I just want way more money than saying it for like a nickel each time. Now, what, by the way, I don't, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to see it. I like dinosaurs. I like the idea of dinosaurs. Like would I bet my freaking life on the concept? No, no, I wouldn't. But, yep. uh, but I do think, I mean, come on, there's some big things, you know, cryptozoology, there's stuff all, all over the place. You know, the, the giant panda yep. was a myth. Giant anaconda was a myth. The giant squid, which is very deadly, but you know, that we've still never caught one of the big ones ever. We're never going to, um, yeah. Or, or what? Here's one I throw in every once in a while, which is I believe there's a big species. You can look this up um, of of cobra. I call it the um, Goliath cobra, which is I think there's some species out there that some some guy in a pith helmet <laughs> walks up to and it's like, oh wow, look at that! And he tries to write it down in his journal, and well, that's the last you ever hear from him. And so it's never <laughs> it's never discovered. So I think that happens all the time. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But that's so true. I think so many things that are that are. Uh... You know that, that that are going going to be documented for the first right, time. Right, right. They're not going to be documented. I'm going to be famous. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be dead. Yeah, yeah. Those are the last words of many an explorer. So okay, so one of the things that we uh, love to talk about and and uh, shoot the breeze and chew the fat and yeah. any number of other uh, phrases um, would be uh, when it comes to UFOs. And um, one of the things that I've that we have speculated on and yeah. when it comes to the idea of let's say we're in an enclosed and this is one of the things that, that also gets me is um and where i would say i at least I, me personally i kind of parted ways with some of the things with uh, with, with with skiba right um and so a lot of people in the christian realm would uh, look at that as well these are all you know, it's a it's a demonic force when it comes to UFOs, and when it comes, these are things that are demonic and they're very spiritual and and, and so forth. And I have no problem um, with uh, you know with looking at those particular theories. Right. Uh, one of the things that uh, got me though is if if you're basing stuff on if you're basing your ideas on the fact that we just can't know certain things. And I, I, that's so critical right. to me. When anything, there's, there are certain things we just can't know, right. um, and we do not know. Uh, so when I look at, like, okay, build a theory, of course, hypothesize all you want. That's the beauty of it. That's what's so fun. Right. Um, but when it comes down, it's like, well, okay, we think this because so we don't think there actually can be aliens. Um, but you know, because of, uh, you know, um, well, the whole thing's enclosed. So it's, it's gotta be some other kind of a thing. Right. Well, I look at it and I, know kind of, I want to get your take. The way that I kind of look at it is, well, of course there could be people coming from other places. Sure. Outside. Does, it, does this mean that we're the only dome? In other words, if, if this is an enclosed system, it would stand to reason that it was created by something. Yes. And if it's an enclosed system that's created by something, that means stuff exists outside of this enclosed system, yep. and that there's a very good possibility that there are other systems. Sure. And the fact that something, uh, the idea that there could be some sort of an entrance uh, and a way to get in and out of this system yeah. would also make sense. Yeah. Um, and so I've kind of looked at that as saying, look, the thing that gets me about so many of the things, well, we're from the, we're from the Pleiades. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, we're from uh, Dracor. Okay, well, whenever I hear them saying, when I say them, I mean people talking about, well, this is, you know, we've heard this telepathically or whatever. Right. We, or we, from, we're, we're communicated with from these beings right. that are extraterrestrials. And 
the thing that always kind of gets me that I'm a little more <laughs> leery about is when they say, well, this is from this group of, of uh, aliens, and they, and they hail from this star system. And I'm like, well, but that entire thing seems to be kind of fake to me. Yeah. And so, but, of course, then I think to myself, is it just a way of them kind of saying, uh, all right, <laughs> our, our existence, uh, if you point up to where that batch of lights is, uh, we're kind of over there. Sure. Like, I don't know if that, it could be that. I don't know. Like, if you go outside of your system, our system is, uh, uh, you know, up and to the left. Yeah, there you go. They, 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 you know, uh, it's all, it's all. Another, it's another it's dome over there that looks like a batch of lights shining through the right. thing to us. Yeah. All right, who, who knows, you know? You, yeah, you always say the uh, planetarium yeah. thing, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I get and the idea, the idea of it being. Well, well, it has to be something from here. Aliens have to be something that that's within the system because this is a system that's enclosed. Right. What's your take on that? Do you think that that's that has to be? Do you think it could be outside of the system? Where, where do you? It land? could be. It could be either. I'm a big fan of. I mean, I could go really, really with either. Which is the old question: Are they? Are the, first off, is there other things flying around up there that aren't us? Yeah, all the time. I mean, I've seen it with night vision binoculars. It is amazing to see what's up there. I mean, the sky is crawling with stuff. They are not satellites and they are not us. Yeah. Uh, the question is, are they trapped in here with us? Or are they coming from outside? Or could they be both? To, to be yeah. honest, um, either way, uh, I'd like to say that they're probably both. Because there's old remnants of civilizations that are that are running around here, and I'm not trying to conflict with anything biblical, but I mean, come on, there's right. sunken cities off of Japan, sunken cities off of India, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, Bimini Road, Puna, Puma Punku, and so on and so on. Um, Detroit, Michigan. At the what? Yeah. Detroit, Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, Michigan. Yes. <laughs> Uh, there's all sorts of weird places that, uh, that where older civilizations uh, have, have been before us. I mean, heck, if we want to go biblical, the, the Tower of Babel was a whole nother civilization. People say, oh, no, it was part of ours. Like, no, it wasn't. No, that was a whole nother, whole nother group. So, but could they have come, been coming in and out? Yeah, it's possible. Sure. What I can say, though, pretty confidently is that whoever it is that's, that's doing this, is it possible that they're lying you know, or exact stretching the truth on their side. They've probably been told the, the same prime directive. There seems to be protocols put in place, meaning yeah. you're not allowed to just land in the middle of, I don't know, Indiana and come out and start taking selfies and signing autographs and, and doing all that <laughs> because it would screw so many things up. And right. if anyone has any doubts about that, look up the one of my favorite examples to give, which is um, the, the 1561 Nuremberg event which was the, the greatest UFO city, sighting, public sighting of all time, which is two giant factions show up on a b beautiful, clear April morning over Nuremberg, Germany, just start hammering at each other like the sharks and the jets. And for an hour, and to where, you know, the sketch artists are out there, they're drawing the whole thing, having their schnitz and glubin and toast. And then after an hour, a third faction shows up in, the, in between them and, and makes them scatter and just raises all these questions like, okay, who are these first two guys? Why were they fighting here? Who was these? Th who was this third faction? Why were the other two? You know, were they the cops? Were they the UN? But the part that threw me at the end was like, what sort of response time is an hour? It's like I could yeah. shoot a gun out this window. There will be cops here in five minutes, right? Well, not, well, and and not to mention, uh, where where in the world can I get my hands on some Schnitzenburger? Yeah. Because that, I mean, Schnitzengluben. Schnitzengluben. Yeah. Schnitzengluben. I mean. <laughs> Let's be, let's be I, frank. I'm gluten free. <laughs> He's gluten free. Always has been. But, but, son of a gun. but yeah, I, I think they're real. Um, and, and do I think they're Mars and Jupiter and Venus? No. Uh, and I think there'd be anyone that says that, you know, they're from the Pleiades or from, from Draco or wherever. I think, no, nah, no, nah, they're being told that basically as a cover story. I think they're, because you, you, you can't tell them, you know, that's part of the thing. It's like, you can't, if, if you can abduct all the people you want. But you can't say, oh, yeah, by the way, the Earth is flat. Don't go to Antarctica. You can't say that. It's, it's, goes, right. it's against the rules, whatever. Well, and, and, and doesn't it seem like it's just – it just doesn't – it just seems so obvious to me that there is – that the agenda is, is there yeah. uh, when it comes to how things are being rolled out oh, yeah. in regards to the extraterrestrial question yeah. uh, over the past – well, at least, at least I mean, a long time, oh, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Exponent but exponentially so within the last 10, five years. Even. We are now in a place where it doesn't matter if you're eight years old or 80 years old. You have now an Aliens movie reference. 
somewhere along the line. I mean, the movies go all the way back to, I don't know, the original The Day the Earth Stood Still, you know, back in the, the 50s, where you've got, you know, to where if somebody landed their ship right now, there would be two schools of thought. One people would come out and, and say, oh, wow, they do look like the people from Avatar, you know, the nerds. I mean, it's like, let's get a selfie. And there'd be other people would be like, let's start a church and honor the blue people. And yeah. that that's how it would be divided. So I don't know. I'm kind of torn when it comes to it because I really, really want some sort of, even even though I, I, I be careful what you wish for, I really want a big spaceship project blue beam thing to show up because What's happening now, from a plot standpoint, is just bugging me to no end. How so? How so? Expand on that. Well, you know, just the just the slow burn. You know, the the collapse of everything around us. I mean, I, I know full well not to end this on a uh, on a downturn note, but I know full well that the the Russia thing is going to escalate. We're just oh, yeah. we're just begging for him. It's probably going to be Finland, and we're just begging for him to do it. And it's like, okay, and, you know, if that's the way you want to go, I mean, I would have. Again, I'm I'm a big I'm a sucker for good writing, and so there's too many movies, way too many movies. Like I just pick them apart, and in yeah. this case, it's like yeah, you could go this way, but no one's gonna watch this more than once. <laughs> it's just well, yeah. I mean, you so must have loved just... the new Matrix, huh? Oh, Joe. <laughs> oh well, well, hell, if you're gonna go down that road, why don't you just sit? Why don't you go down the road of how Disney used saved up all its DVD nickels from every babysitting DVD, otherwise known as their animation, and then they just said, "Hey, you know what? Let's just start buying up studios <laughs> and destroying the franchises as we go along." Destroying but the, by the way, the Matrix—they didn't even have to wreck that one; it wrecked itself. It wrecked itself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, got that uh, new director. <laughs> find find me a fran oh, yeah. find me a franchise that hasn't been destroyed in the last five years. Find me one, because because Lord of the Rings, they're they're already in queued up. Amazon's already you know, they're gonna do it. Doctor Who's already done it. Everybody's dead. Uh, the James Bond, you know what, is still in relatively good shape. It's like oh, you shouldn't have killed off James Bond at the end. It's like ah, you know what, that's what he wanted. Yeah. So that's what James Bond wanted, or that's what Daniel Craig? Wanted? Daniel Craig. That's what Daniel Craig wanted. Okay. Daniel it's Craig like kill him off. Yeah. You know. It's like that usually, usually, I mean, that's not a guarantee now, of course, nowadays, like Sigourney Reaver killed herself off. She directed and starred in Aliens 3, killed herself off, and they still brought her back. Um, okay, well, real quick, real yeah. quick. Do, do, you, do, you, do you subscribe to the alien savior or alien threat? Or both? Oh, that's a, that, words, that is a uh, really the, the, the ET, a, the ET, yeah, both the ET. both because the, the movies are kind of split right down the middle. I mean, for as many movies as there are, I mean, granted, most of the Savior movies were in the '80s, and then they got darker in the '90s and the 2000s. Um, it that's a tough one because, and, and that's a great <laughs> question because again, whoever lands, depending on what you what circles you are in, I mean, they could go either way. If they show up benign enough. The, the yeah. problem with the aliens thing, whoever lands, it's got to be a color that doesn't exist on the planet. Because if they show up in any of the colors that we are using, they are automatically discriminated against. So you're stuck yeah. with blue, gold, or silver. You can't use yeah. green because everyone knows the green aliens are bad. And you can't yeah. use red because, well, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. Uh, so it's got you got to be stuck, or you, I mean, you can go silver, gold, or blue, and some sort of maybe optional glowing or sparkly thing. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, you could show up as a savior. But I mean, your initial response depending, and if the, again, people are funny how we're wired. If they're attractive looking, they'll be the good yeah. guys. If they're <laughs> ugly, they're gonna be the bad guys. That's good. So. There you go. That's right. I'm, I'm, and I'm all for sparkles. <laughs> anyway, um, so, hey. Well, is, it we'll, we'll, is it possible that they're on the land outside of Antarctica? Sure. Which is, which is what that, which is what that, uh, which is an interesting point that the, the, the video that we just watched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, sure. Why, why wouldn't they be? Yeah. Why, I mean, no, the, would, or if, if they're not, they're subterranean, which is also very possible. Hollow, hollow Earth thoughts real quick. Uh, hollow Earth. I, that's how I got into Flat Earth. I, I, that's, was, research, that's I, into I, I was researching I'm Hollow Earth. Hollow Earth dovetails perfectly fine into Flat Earth. It doesn't have to be a big Dyson sphere where it's completely hollowed out in the corner. And, and, you know, you remember our civilization lives from 90% of our civiliz civilization lives from um, sea level to one mile. So you create a cavern that's even 50 miles high. 
that's enough for air travel and everything you could possibly want. Yeah. So Hollow Earth, no problem at all. We'll put a stick uh, stick a pin in it right there, Mark. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure indeed. Thank you so much for coming oh, on. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, sharing your time. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank, <laughs> thanks, guys. All right. Take care. Yeah.